Hey guys, welcome back to another podcast on the Shooter's Roll. Today we've got special guest Obi Shea in the house from Valley of the Sixers. And on my side, I have my man, my main man, Lloyd. How are you guys? What's up, George? Good, good to go. Good to go, man. So, so I'll, I'll leave it to you, Lloyd, because you have a special relationship with our guests. Um, by the way, I wouldn't man, say special. <laughs> he's a special. He's a he's a special guy. He, let's let's put it that way. He's a special guy. He's a good guy. Good guy that I coached. It was it was fun. So, but uh, thanks, Obes, for being on as well, bro. It's, uh, no, no worries. It. How was college overall? How was the experience? Um, my college experience was super up and down. I think my first two years, um, I got a taste of like. Um, the, that that change in level in, in the level of basketball and the, that level of professionalism and um, that whole side of things but um, I, I didn't get that social experience that um, that you hear about a lot in going to college um, so that was my first two years and then my second two years is probably the exact opposite um, wasn't a, as high of a level um, experience basketball wise but I had the, the whole social aspect um down which was yeah it was awesome that's probably the best two years of my life that I had well had most fun two years of my life anyway so that's the both worlds there. yeah that's cool like you went to metro state in denver um denver is super cold when it's in winter it is um how's how was the change between florida and denver oh i mean when you talk about denver and metro state it's where 6 a.m practice five days out of the week, 6 a.m. start. So that's like a 4.45 a.m. wake up um, out, out into the snow to get in the cold van to drive to practice. So um, there's that whole side of it. It's like, you know, minus 10 degrees and stuff like. So yeah, that's the grind. And then you, and then Florida was the complete opposite, man. Like just yeah, afternoon practices and, and we had a beach on campus. Like there's no real winter in Florida, swim all year round. Um, hey, Obi, yeah. Obi, was was that a man-made beach? Was that? It it was, yeah. But it's um, the whole school's just essentially surrounded by water, and the act, and then the real beach, that's like the natural beach, I guess, is like three minutes drive down the road. So, yeah, I mean, you can't complain. <laughs> cool. So, how, how do you pronounce it? Was it Eckard or Eckerd? Eckerd. 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 Right. Yeah. So you, you transferred Metro State to Denver, like uh, to Eckerd, sorry. Yeah. What's the barriers? Like, you know, when you transfer, how hard is it to transfer? And what's the like situation living wise? Um, I mean, there's there's hoops you got to jump through in terms of um, releases and stuff from your school. But um, mine was pretty mine was pretty cruisy. I went on a couple different visits, and I was just after. A, um, a good social experience, I guess, just because I hated that side of things in Denver. So went on a few visits and loved the school. And yeah, it was actually pretty easy for me. And then um, having already visited and stuff, which made the transition pretty easy. Um, pretty easy. Um, a few things you got to do academically and stuff, to, but depending on what school you're coming from and going to. Um, but yeah, overall, it wasn't too bad. Um, and yeah, it turned out I was sort of landed on my feet there, I guess. Um, that thing. Yeah. I mean, we saw all the highlights on um, YouTube for you at, at, when you were at um, Eckerd. <laughs> Unreal. That's a, that's a throwback, yeah. <laughs> hey, you, you get some good highlights on YouTube, you throw that out there. Yeah. Um, okay. It's basically a, a platform as well for college kids. Um, what's like dorm situation like when you're living away from Australia? Um, yeah, obviously a lot of it's dependent on um, what college you go to and I'd urge guys to ask like in the recruiting process like ask a million questions about every detail of um, that particular school because it's like at the end of the day it's so important man like you like as an 18 year old or whatever you go into the other side of the world you're no family no friends around you so that having that comfortability of knowing what situation you're walking into whether it be okay I'm going to be sharing a room with another person or am I going to have my own room, am I going to have an apartment, I'm going to have a kitchen to cook the food I want to eat, like all that sort of stuff, like that becomes important when you're on the other side of the world with no, with no family around. So for me personally, I 
always had like a, a single, like my own room, my own spot, um, and had facilities to cook and stuff. So that made life heaps easier because, you know, going over there, I hated, I hated American food and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, again, just like I would urge kids in that recruiting process, just to ask questions and yeah. And if you're not able to go on visits, yeah, just get it, see if you can get a full picture of what you're walking into before you <laughs> jump off the plane and, um, you're in a different world. <laughs> Yeah, did you get yes. that advice, Obi? Did you get that advice from someone, or did, was, was that something that uh, you, you, you thought of before you went to the, I guess, the recruitment process? No, like I didn't. Well, that's the thing. I, um, I didn't ask those questions, so I didn't really know what to expect um, the first time round in when I got to Metro. So that was that shock element, um, and a few of the freshmen that came in with me, like. Um, I, I went over there with Harrison Goodrick. I don't know if he plays anymore, but he was a Norse kid. Um, so we both went in together as freshmen and like he just, he hated it. Like he, well, I mean, we both didn't really like it, especially at first, but he ended up transferring after his freshman year because it was just like such a shock for him. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, if he had asked more questions, if he, we both had asked more questions and got a better idea of what we're going into, um, you know, potentially you don't go to that school. Um, or, you know, you just have a better idea of, of what's happening and um, what to expect, I guess. Yeah, so this is like lessons learned. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Lutz. Yeah, no, I, that, that's uh, a big thing for like guys and going on visits. Visits are a big thing. I mean, um, yeah. if you can do it. Did you get a visit? Um, not or a to chance? Metro. Not to Metro, but to, my, to the school I transferred to. I went on a, a few different visits and stuff. So yeah, that, that's a game changer. Yeah, I'm just gonna hop on to like your senior career before we go senior. Um, basically, Europe. Um, how was it playing over in Europe? What's like the fans like? What, what's everything like when you travel? Things like that. Yeah, um, Europe's yeah whole different whole different thing again. Like um, obviously, depending on what level you go to, um, some of the lower leagues over there. You get much more professionalism in playing at a, you know, a mid-major college in the States. Um, uh, but yeah, like, yeah, again, just really depends on the club and, and everything. But in my experience, um, there's a lot of long bus rides <laughs> in the cold, especially in Germany and, and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, look, you get to play basketball for money. So at the end of the day, that kind of trumps everything um, if you can get through. Um, all the other stuff, like the culture, the culture differences and stuff like that, and just learn to sort of embrace it and embrace the fact that you're on the other side of the world to do something that you like doing. It's, yeah, and it's the whole experience of it. So if you can manage to do that, it's you know you have fun. Yeah, see, like I, I remember when, like when you're under 18s, we had a uh, we had some troubles with your uh, jump shot. Not gonna lie, I'll put it out there. <laughs> Um, but now, yeah. now watching watching everything that you do now, in, in terms of like Europe, um, did they focus on your jumper and things like that, or did they they really highlight shooting the three as a perimeter guy, as a big? Um, well, I mean, yeah, like you know, like the, the, the game of basketball is changing, and it's the same everywhere. Like, in five players on the court need to be able to shoot now. That's just that's just how it is. Like. Um, but I felt like I felt like I started to gain a bit of confidence in my jumper, like um, towards my junior senior year in college. Um, started shooting it more in my senior year, and then obviously going over did going over to Germany and Spain. Um, but yeah, like you know, the, the more skills you can add to um, your repertoire, it's like the more money you get paid <laughs> essentially as a pro. Like if you can be, you know, if you can play like a guard as a big, then you're going to get more money. And, yeah, you're going to be a better pro, like at the end of the day. So um, it's just about it's just about putting the hours in to, to hone on the hone in on those skills and and get it done. But you know, that's coming from a guy that yeah never was naturally like a shooter or whatever, and I still have heaps of work to do. Um, so it's just a constant work in progress, I think. Yeah, like you see in the uh, YouTube stuff, you you shoot the ball at a better clip uh, when you're at Logan. He had one game, 37 points, a bucket load of rebounds, and he shot at 80% for that game. Did I? That's pretty so, good. <laughs> nah, I'm letting you know, man. <laughs> done some, done some, done some deep diving, and uh, yeah, 
I mean, I actually watched that game earlier. Did you? Um, yeah. That's a that was, that, nah, it's a good game. It was a good game, actually. It was good to see. Like, but that's what I said. Like, I'm proud of you to see you succeed. So, good guy. Yeah, pretty good, bro. Yeah, I'm just waiting on my uh, LA 36ers hat. Um, feeling the love. Yeah. Feeling the love in the room. <laughs> hey. No. Yeah, I, I was a good I guy. Did, so. I actually did get a hat for you. It was in the boot of my car, and I don't think it's there anymore. So I'd ask Jason to see what happened to that. <laughs> likely yeah, story. Someone, likely someone story. <laughs> yeah, someone got rid of that. That's a bit yeah. of background wrong. I walked in with a Sydney Kings hat. I returned to look at guys. Don't wear that hat again. <laughs> I mean, I like one. I wear it. I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah. It's, coming. it's coming, man. It's coming. I'll post one up to you when I get back down there. Nah, that's cool. That's cool. Hey, um, just. Now, you know, when we roll over to like Adelaide and things like that, um, like I said, like it, it's good you're back home, you're here in Australia at least. Um, how's Adelaide? So, in terms of like moving, sort of being in Australia but being away from home, so directly um, with like family. Yeah, look, I loved Adelaide as a city. Um, and I felt you know, like the transition is you begin to get used to that after being, you know two different colleges, played two seasons professionally, jumped around all over the place. So um, coming back home wherever wherever it was was going to be much easier than, you know, packing all your stuff into two suitcases and going to the other side of the world. So, um, yeah, I, fa- I found that pretty cruisy. And I just, yeah, I love I loved my season there and just being able to be um, back in Australia and just back amongst your own culture and stuff. And, yeah, while you enjoy your experiences overseas and stuff there's nothing there's no place like home obviously so yeah i love that whole aspect of it just being able to be here for summer and um all that sort of stuff is yeah it's, yeah super good yeah it's, it's super good to see you back here anyway maybe it, it's uh the adelaide thing just quickly i've got one from someone uh you know ben knight um, yeah he asked me to that. ask you what is a 36er <laughs> Thirty sixer. It, it's the we got bets on this too. We got bets on this, Obi. So, so let's 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 see if you know the answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the. Uh, was it the Independence Day for South Australia or something? I'm pretty mm. sure. Lloyd, uh, are you asking me or are you telling me? <laughs> A bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, I mean, we're, we're trying to work out what it is. What's that? Uh, we're we're trying to work out what it is. Um, I'm pretty I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's it's a significant date, um, 1836 or whatever it is. It's a significant date in South Australian history. Yeah, that's cool. Like that's um that that was just like a, a bit of a pot shot sort of thing for, for Adelaide as well. Yeah, tell um, Nadia I nailed the question though. Yeah, yeah, no, mate, he nailed me on Monday. He um, <laughs> yeah, a bit a bit of a chat about what was I was founded. I found the answer, guys. What <laughs> Just is Google it? it. Don't, yeah, what is it? Uh, yeah, Adelaide was founded in 1836. There we place. go. Founded in 1836. There we go. Yeah. There right. Go. I'll have to work on the uh, Vanessa next week with working out what the lightning is for Adelaide. How's <laughs> the, how, was the, how was the weather in Adelaide? It was good? Yeah, it was sick. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, winter's a bit colder than Sydney, but... The sun was good. Like the beaches there are beautiful. Like I think I never really realized like that, how nice that, how nice the beaches and stuff are, are down there. Like you drive like forty minutes outside the city, especially, and it's like some of the nicest beaches I've been to. So it was sick. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It's a more yeah, chill. I saw some of the uh, Not I saw busy. some of your Insta posts on the beaches. So um, yeah. that, that's that's, that's one big thing. I mean, people yeah, that are watching, yeah. watch your yeah. watch your handle on Insta. Watch your handle. Uh, just my name, no space, no punctuation. Yeah, yeah we'll share it there too. We'll, we'll share it. We'll share it on our. Yeah, we'll share um, it out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, 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 you would miss out on those uh, beach photos. They're actually really nice out. out yeah, no, it's nice. nice. Yeah, you don't get beaches like that in Germany. That's for sure. Hey, um, so we talk about like um, moving to Adelaide. You had uh, Joey, um, recruit you and things like that. And it, he spoke highly of you. Um, basically, when when you dropped in Adelaide, he said, "You know, you athletic big man, play the D. You block shots around the rim, and you can keep up with their pace." Um, basically, how was practice when you when we talk about 
his style and things like that. So practice, travel, and recovery. How, um, how, how did you find that? I mean, I think as a young guy, playing for Joey is awesome. Like, as a young guy, you just want to play. Like, especially, um, you know, if you're a guy that doesn't, you know, you, like I played whatever it was, 15, 16 minutes. Um, so, like, when it comes to practice, I'm like, dude, I just want to play. Like, I don't get to play 30 minutes in the game. And that's what we did a whole bunch of. But, you know, if you're an older guy towards the end of your career or even, you know what I mean, like just, um, you, know, you know, in your 30s or whatever, like it's, you know, late 20s, early 30s, you you want to tone it down a little bit. You're playing 30 minutes. It's like, oh, can we just do a few walkthroughs and get some shots up? But, um, yeah, it just depends on, you know, on what you like. But, yeah, it was a lot of up-tempo stuff, a lot of competing um, practice-wise. So, you know, personally, I enjoyed it. And I, I actually liked Joey a lot as a co- having him as a coach. Um, you know, gave me an opportunity and stuff. So I got nothing but praise for the guy, to be honest. Um, and then travel and, um, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's gets busy, gets hectic sometimes, gets draining, you know, like, like you sometimes you'd be on the road for, you know, four days or whatever. And it's, you feel like you're never home kind of thing, but it's, it's all part of it. Um, you also get the benefits of, um, you know, traveling around to different cities and stuff. And get a, you know, go out, hit the town. Um, if you have got a Saturday night game or whatever, and yeah, you know, you, that's fun too. So, um, yeah, and then recovery. Recovery is actually sweet. We play on, play in the city on the beach. Just get to go to the beach for recovery. So that was dope. <laughs> that's probably not a bad way to recover. Yeah, for sure. Next day, do you have um? You got massage surface and stuff like that on hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At practice do. and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. Yeah, that's a, that's a big advantage as well as a pro. Mm-hmm. You get that that mm-hmm. immediate recovery. So yeah, that's big. Hey, um, rookie year as a pro and a guy that's played a lot. What are we? Uh, what's what's the rookie stuff like? Uh, are we when we were in eighteens when we had rookies? Yeah. Uh, are, we, are we carrying luggage? Are we yeah. carrying luggage? Is that still a thing? I, I think I was. Um, I'm pretty sure I shaved Andy's head, and maybe someone's eyebrows got shaved or something in one of the Melbourne tourneys in juniors. Do you remember that? Or no? Yeah, I do remember that because we had to turn yeah. up the next day and play while you yeah, guys look yeah. like imbeciles. But um, yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, but like for the NBL, yeah. like if for NBL, Adelaide, you're a rookie. No, Are you having um, to carry luggage? Well, technically, I actually, I got off good because I played professionally before that. So I wasn't technically, even though it was my first year in the NBL, I wasn't actually technically a rookie because I wasn't eligible for Rookie of the Year. So um, I got off pretty good. Um, but yeah, like Froles and Jack McVay, like, because they were the closest to rock- rookies on the team. They were, yeah, they carried bags and do that sort of stuff. All the DPs, yeah, they cop it just part of it you know it's that coming of age so you just gotta do it get it done yeah, you got, they gotta learn yeah <laughs> um right. so this year first year um what's something that you identified as a thing for you to take in the next year maybe like something you played against or uh something that you would take in the year two when you come back um i think my biggest thing personally is just like um I'm, I know I'm good enough to to play and like and be a really good player in this league right now. Um, if I play with confidence and if I play the, the way I know I can play, so I just yeah, like I just think I need to be more consistent in that. Uh, every time I step on the floor, just um, to be confident in my game and just play my game and not be worried about any of the outside stuff and just yeah and just and just yeah be me and be the player that. I know I can be kind of thing. So that's that's my focus going in more of the more of a mental side of things than anything. That's that's my priority. Um, but then also, you know, the, the you know simple skills stuff. Like obviously, I want to shoot the more shoot, shoot the ball more and better and more confidently. And um, and yeah, there's a few bits and pieces that I want to work on. But I think um, yeah, it's just it comes down to yeah, just playing playing the way I know I can play. Um, I think for me. Yeah, of course. Like we 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 all plan to get better, right, for the next year. So, um, did you have anyone in Adelaide? I know you had Jerome Randall. You had a couple of imports. Did anyone 
sort of grab you and mentor sort of thing. Just, you know, if, if things were going your way, maybe someone grabbed you and said, hey, listen, here we go. Did someone mentor? Um, no, I don't really have like a mentor per se. I mean, you pick up stuff just talking to, talking to guys that have been around for forever, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, you pick, yeah, you, you definitely pick up certain things, but there was no one that I sort of consistently went to or consistently came to me to, um, yeah, for that kind of a relationship. Um, that probably would have helped me, but yeah, I don't, I mean, no, not, not that I can really think of, I guess, but I think Joey was pretty good for me and in just instilling that confidence. Um, so that was, yeah, that was big for me, but. Yeah, as far as players go, not really. Picked up bits and pieces here and there, but yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. Like it's, I mean, your game's gonna develop. I'm waiting for it. Just don't, just don't go off uh, big against the Kings if you're gonna have a big one. Uh, so just go off against, uh, you know, you go off against the Hawks or something. You keep wearing that Kings hat, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go off against them. Yeah, well, <laughs> you give me that Adelaide hat, man. We good. I'll wear it. I'll wear it to a game. Sounds good. Um, travel, like we spoke a little bit about travel. Um, I know you guys were flying and whatever between like cities, but like to New Zealand, um, do the big guys like you probably, um, Harry and DJ, do you guys get uh, preference for exit aisles and sort of stuff like that? Do you get preference? Yeah, yeah. So I think, um, what, as one of the MBL things, they give they allocate six exit rows. I'm pretty sure to each team. So yeah, the six tallest guys get it. That's pretty much how it goes. Sometimes we had a battle with uh, our assistant KB because he's like six six nine too. Sometimes he'd try and jump on, like skip the line and jump on the plane first and try and snag an exit row. But other than that, it was yeah, pretty much like the six tallest get it kind of thing. Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean. Uh... Yeah. Based on the, the next person I'm going to ask you about, you probably don't fly first class um, like they would. Um, it is probably an overstated question. It's probably one of the, the highlights that the NBL's got. How was it playing against Bogut? How, how did you find it? Um, I think they got me for tripping Bogut. They like find me and stuff for, for like tripping Bogut. But um, apart from that, I mean, I don't know. You don't like, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't really anything that I was like, whoa, I'm playing against Bogut, to be honest. Like, he's just another player on the other side of the court. So, um, you know, it was I was, it was more of a wow factor going and playing against the Jazz, actually, and um, playing in that arena. And that, that was sort of a more surreal experience, playing in an NBA arena, arena, you know, in front of NBA fans and that sort of stuff. Um, was probably more of like a, like, yeah, reality check, kind of like, well. Like, yeah, that preseason game uh, against... Utah was was awesome. <laughs> but as yeah. I said, like you get to step on an NBA floor, that's probably something we ever said to each other. You get to step on an NBA floor and play. Yeah, it's crazy. That's, that's 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 big kudos, you know. Yeah, it's, that's that's big. Yeah. Just yeah, for sure. Um, that's big. Yeah. Uh, NBL is going to Tassie shortly. Another another team for you to travel to. What are you, uh, what's your thoughts for Tasmania? Like it's it's a good for the league, um, yeah, it's, but yeah, it's um it's it's going to be hard to start with, but they'll probably um, have a good fan base. Adelaide's got a big fan base. You guys changed arenas this year and go to that new arena. Um, probably not as good as Adelaide fans when they boo you when you're not playing well. <laughs> so yeah, Tasmania might be close. How, how what do you think about Tasmania? It's good, good for the league. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, anytime you add another team, it's um, it's sick. Like that's that's probably the only thing the NBL lacks really is um, just the fact that we're not deep as far as the number of teams. Like some of the European leagues, um, where they have like eighteen teams and stuff, and it's just more fun competition. Um, but yeah, so anytime you add another team, I'm down for it. Plus, it's like more jobs for for guys, and yeah, I mean, I think it's gonna be sick. Apart from having to go down to Tassie to travel. Um, it'll be cool. Okay. I mean, it's probably not as bad as traveling to um, go and play the Breakers in New Zealand. That yeah. flight, what's that flight? Five hours? Oh, it's three like hours. it's like three and change, but like 
three and change, yeah. It's just, it's just annoying going through customs. Just anytime you got to fly international, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, it's probably the one thing. At least Tasmania, they don't have that. Yeah. Um, I've got one thing that I always, I've, I've had for a while. You've got, you're up there with block of the year. Then you had uh, Old Mate from Illawarra last year. I think I think you you take the uh, the cake on that one. You reckon? Yeah, that's cool. I, I think I'll you take. I'll take it. I'll take it. In front of that's the rim, fun. trying to dunk it, says you say uh, no. Yeah. I'll take and that it. was a, that, that was a big play for that game too because it was like two two points of difference. Big yeah. play, get in the other end of the score. Um, I think I think that was one of my better games too actually this season, or one of one of the Cairns games was. But yeah, no, that was yeah, it was cool. I'll, t- I'll take block with you. Appreciate it. <laughs> you take it. No, I'll put it out there. I'll uh, I'll try and get as many views on that one as as possible. Yeah. Because you said uh, Cairns. Um, Deng that was there at Cairns, he was at Adelaide before. You were his, um, not replacement, but Joey said that he lost the guy and you pick up you as an Aussie. Um, yeah, you probably want to, that was probably one of your games that you wanted to get back in them, so it was good. It was good for yeah. Joey as well. Probably helped yeah. you Yeah, Yeah, even though we took an L, but yeah. <laughs> How do I don't about the L. <laughs> you, get it, you get it next to you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You got a new coach, so What's that, bro? you got a new coach now, Connor Henry. Oh, yeah. So has he reached out to you, said anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been speaking to him a bit over the last, um, well, since he got the job. Um, a few couple phone calls and some exchange some messages and stuff. Um, seems like a really, really good dude, uh, real genuine guy, and um, that aligns with everything I've heard about him from other people so yeah um yeah it'll be it'll be refre- it'll be you know refreshing i know especially for some of the other guys that have you know had had you know one coach with with the 36ers for however i think tease has been with joey for 10 years or whatever so um they obviously had a relationship but at the same time i'm sure um it'll be a fresh you know fresh change for some guys and yeah i mean it'll it'll yeah Anytime you bring a new, a new, you know, sort of head of the dog into the group, and it's yeah, people get excited, and you know, it's a fresh start kind of thing. So, that's if you 15, 16 minutes, you're getting up to 30 now. That's the plan. New guy, you're getting in. That's the plan. Impress, impress at uh, camp. Get up to 30 yeah. minutes a game. That'd be good. That's That'd what I'm good. looking forward to. Me too. This is our spot too. If if you had a choice to have dinner with anyone alive or deceased, who would it be and why? I like that question. Um, you also put me on the spot, though. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Kobe. Kobe. Okay. And why is that? Yeah. Um, just the mentality. I would like, I just, yeah, it's, it's just so intriguing. I mean, it sounds generic, but at, at the same time, like someone with a mentality like that and that sort of work ethic is like, that only comes around, you know what I mean? Like you don't, you don't run into that every day. That's for sure. Like Definitely. guys that, guys that work that hard and it's not even necessarily to do with basketball, just in life. I think to somebody that driven and like that ambitious is, yeah, it's super intriguing. So I'd love to pick his brain about that. Yep. Yeah, um, I guess what would uh, if you had one question, what, what, what would you ask, Kobe? Um, I would like to know. Uh, I'd like to know what what he would do if it wasn't basketball, and and um, and how he would pursue it in the same, like how would he apply that mentality to that? Cool. Yeah. That's all I had, Lloyd. Did you have any, any anything more, Lloyd? All right, no, just, as I said, you know, Obes, uh goes back a long way, you and, you and I, with uh, Paulie Millett. So, yeah. Uh, in your thing for us. And, we'll just get... and shout out, shout out to Vernell Price. Oh, big Vernell. 
<laughs> yeah, big fan. Right. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna try. We're gonna try something. Try and get that nephew of his on as well. Yeah, yeah we get that. We get that rolling for sure. So that, that, that's for one sure. thing. Um, but yeah, like I just said, um, probably one of the professional guys that I got the coach, even as an assistant or a head coach. You're probably one of the better guys that put in the work every day. Um, and it was yeah. always going to be something for you that you were always going to go far. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little it, bit of pride there for you, man. Appreciate it, bro. Just work, yeah, that's all it is. Big work, and uh, here's a comment yeah. shirt. Just a bit of comment stuff for you. They should have gave me a yeah. comment shirt to rock for the podcast. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I want my, my Adelaide hat. That's what I want. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got you, bro. I got roll on that one. I'm going to roll with it. All right. <laughs> Hey, Chung, you got something, uh, any, any more for Obes? That's, the, that's it for Obes. Um, yeah, I just feel it as a privilege to be, I guess, uh, in this podcast with Obes and yourself. Like, I can feel the, I can feel the, the, the friendship and the love, man. So, yeah. It was, no, it thanks was for having us. Appreciate it. Cool. Thanks, Obes, man. All right. I appreciate it, bro. Thanks so much, eh? All right. Later.